we'll see here. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Ryan here with you today with a special encourager this week that reminds us what it is to have faith that dominates our reason. Or the way in which our logic, our reason, the things we know and understand serve the faith that God has given us. There's a unique verse from St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that talks about how God's wisdom frustrates the so-called wisdom that we cherish so well this side of heaven. And so here's what God has to say on the matter. Through St. Paul, the Holy Spirit directs 1 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning in verse 19. God says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man, says St. Paul? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Those among the Jews demand miraculous signs, and those among the Greeks look for wisdom. But we, we preach Christ crucified, which is a stumbling block among the Jewish faith and foolishness to those who do not yet believe. But to those whom God has called, both from the Jewish side and the Greek side, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Now, I don't know what it's like for you, but when I think about the foolishness of what is preached in the Christian faith, it's not simply a foolishness that cannot be overcome, like something otherwise trite or pithy or say just language errors that happen in the vulnerability of those who speak, but no, the content, the content that St. Paul shares is a foolishness that is Christ who was crucified and risen again. By anything we would understand, by our standards, by the way that we think things ought to make sense, something like Jesus dying in order to bring life is utter foolishness. But to those who are in good faith, that foolishness of the gospel is also what gives it its power. Because in good faith, of course, we trust that God our Heavenly Father, through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, brings life out of the midst of death. If you're a fan of, of just secular literature, or if you especially love to share in things that are are called spiritual autobiographies. There are many wonderful classic literary authors that have abandoned a bit of their work and expertise in order to reflect on their lives, sometimes in the form of a memoir and other times just trying to count the number of ways that they see God moving in their life. If you like to get alone with a little bit of literature that is not expressly scripture, I'd recommend reading author Annie Dillard. In her book, The Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, she takes that time to express the ways where living alone in the woods in a cabin, uh, she has uh, opportunity to see the number of ways that she might be more closely connected to God, especially in nature. A couple of examples that she uses are beautiful metaphors for this foolishness of the gospel that St. Paul shares. One is a time that she imagines and remembers from her youth where peeking over the side of a canoe she saw a frog that was utterly still on a lily pad and no matter what she did to distract it the frog wouldn't move. Well all of a sudden the frog just kind of started to deflate. I've never seen something like this in person, but as Annie writes it, you hang on every detail. This frog that otherwise looked lively and well just began to shrink and sink into the pond, and that's where, as it turned over dead, she saw the bug that was otherwise a, a, a beetle and parasite that would otherwise inject its venom to paralyze and to still its victim and then to suck the lifeblood out of its body. For as gruesome as something like that is, it took the death of the frog in order to sustain the life of the beetle. 
maybe an image that's not as graphic, as she recalls the story of the frog over the side of the canoe, she also takes time to look out her cabin window as the seasons change, and as the grass waves in the breeze, she sees the birds provided for as a thrush lands on a thistle and begins to pluck out the nutrients of an otherwise dead seed. A seed that had died on the vine of the thistle all of a sudden brings nutrients and sustenance to the bird. And so it is, yes, we could talk about the number of ways that God provides, but when it comes to the foolishness of the gospel, to see the number of ways that God brings life out of the midst of death. I wonder what ways you're counting these days, especially caught up in the transition and climate that we're in especially as we might look to the news or current events or even maybe outside our own back windows, my goodness, we could probably count up the number of ways that we see loss and death on the horizon. But in the midst of the reality of loss and death, God continues to provide, God continues to bring and to promise life. And I know in that regard, for as much as we champion the foolishness of the gospel, what a beautiful way in which one day we'll see that foolishness become a whimsical reality as we're drawn to our Lord's side and as we anticipate and an eternity that's beyond whatever we could ask, imagine, or think. May God continue to bless you beyond reason as you continue to serve and love him and equally love and serve your neighbor with joy. Amen.